and welcome to my first video on learning to code. I wanted to try something different, so I'm in the process of learning to code myself and I thought I'd make videos about it, so you get videos from the perspective of a beginner and maybe they help you in learning to code yourself. I did a little bit of research online, used some resources here and there, and I think a good place to start is HTML on a website called freecodecamp.org. As the name suggests, it's free. You'll find a link to it in the description below. And you should definitely check out their website and learn to code interactively by doing the exercise there. And if you get stuck, you can use my walkthrough right here and find the solutions. If you go to the website, you'll find the curriculum. We'll use the new responsive web design course right here. And the first category is learn HTML by building a cat photo app. And this is going to be the end result right here. Once again, look at it yourself, try to solve these exercises. And only if you get stuck, refer to my walkthrough. Step one, it explains what a tag is. So in this case, an H1 for heading one. And you can see tags right here, HTML and body. And they have closing tags at the bottom. Always written like this. So we've got these smaller than and greater than signs. And in between, in this case, is an H1 for heading one. Right here in our third code line, we've got the actual code. And on the right hand side is what is being displayed in our browser. So hello world. Which is written in between our H1 tags. And we are supposed to change it to cat photo app in the first exercise. So now our browser only displays cat photo app. Step two shows us H1 through H6 headings. So there's a little bit of a hierarchy in these headings. And if we add an H2 tag, don't forget the closing tag, and we'll put something in between. You can see it's still a heading, but it's smaller than the H1. And this is what the hierarchy does. So H1 through H6 gives you headings and they get smaller and have a different style. Keep in mind that when you leave spaces in your code, it won't affect the display in the browser. Let's go to step number three. And the P element is introduced. It's for paragraphs. And we're going to edit below the H2. Once again, don't forget the closing tag. And put this text in between. Our browser shows it like this. So this would be the default style for our text. That's not a heading. We can also comment stuff in our code that's not displayed then in our browser. So it's for readability. And if your code gets more complex, it's going to help you as well. You can write it like this and this opening tag will indicate that everything that follows is now a comment. So our paragraph gets commented out. If I just use the opening tag and it won't be displayed in browser. And if I add the closing tag, our paragraph is visible again. Step five, we also have tags that don't really affect the display in the browser, but it's important for search engine optimization. So search engines like Google and the main tag is one of these. So we're supposed to edit after the H1. It has a closing tag and we're going to nest our h2 and our paragraph into the main. You can just use the tab keys to indent that. And now we can also see that it's nested. So it's a good idea to do that for readability. And right here in step six, the nesting is explained a little bit. Step 
we can see the code down below that the H2 is already indented, but the P isn't, so just use the spacebar. And now we can visually see what's nested inside the main tag, and that makes the code much better to read. Step 7 introduces the image tag. It's simply IMG. And it's the first one that doesn't have a closing tag, so it's self-closing. We've got it right here. And we don't need to write this one. And I've said it's self-closing. Alright, let's jump to step 8, where we're going to add an attribute to our image tag. So we can write more stuff into this tag. In this case, src, which stands for the source. And we can give it a value by simply using an equal sign and our quotation marks. So we could, for example, use this one in the example. And here's our sign that indicates that an image should be displayed. But in the exercise, we are actually supposed to use this link as a source. So if I put it there, we can see an image in the browser. So this is the way you write attributes and give them values in HTML. Step number nine gives us the alt attribute. So we can put multiple attributes inside of tags. In the example, we've got an image with a source cat.jpg and an alt with a value a cat. And for the one that we've got, we're supposed to add the alt attribute with a value of a cute orange cat lying on its back. And if we, for example, get rid of the link right here, we can see that the alt tag is displayed. So this is what this attribute does whenever the image can't be accessed and displayed in the browser. We're going to see the alt text. Step 10 introduces the anchor element. So it's for links and it has a closing tag again. So simply a opening tag and a closing tag. And it has an attribute called href. So this is the address where we're going to link to. In this step, the link isn't shown in the browser. We first have to place a text in between our opening and closing tags for the anchor element. Here you can see the example. Click here to go to freecodecamp.org. This is the text in between the anchor elements. And we're going to put cat photos in between and now we can see that. And if we hover over it in the browser, we can see that we could click on it and we would be redirected to the href. So the address that we've put as a value for the href attribute. If we click on it, we'll get this message. Let us add a new anchor element right here in our paragraph and cat photos is the text for it. And as an href we'll add this address. And now we've got these two words as an anchor text and in the next step we can delete the second link so the one below our paragraph right here. Let's get rid of it. We 
you can add a target attribute and if we give it the value underscore blank let's do that and we hover over the text cat photos if we would click on it the address freecatphotoapp.com would be opened in a new tab so this is what the target underscore blank does We can also turn images into links, so you don't have to use anchor text. You can also use an image as an anchor. Just add the A tag before the image and close it right here after the image. And now our image is an anchor. And if we would hover over it, left click, we could redirect the user to this address. Alright, there are more tags that aren't displayed in the browser, but they help for readability and for our search engines. For example, the section. So we can structure our content on websites in different sections. Let's do this right here before the H2 tag. And we're going to close it right here after our image. And we can indent that to make obvious that it's nested. And we're good. Step 17. We're going to add a second section below the first one. For now it doesn't have any content, so it doesn't change anything in the browser display. But now we are going to add content to it in step 18. We'll start with a new heading, H2, and we'll call it cat lists. So we're going to see it right below our image in the browser display on the right hand side. And we can move on to step 19. We'll add a new heading, this time an H3. Generally, if you create a website, you should only use one H1, so one heading of hierarchy one on a page, but you can use multiple H2s or H3s. And now in step 20, we're going to get introduced to lists, in this case unordered lists, which have the tag UL, an opening and a closing tag. So it should look like this. For now nothing is displayed in the browser. But if we add a list item an LE tag to our unordered list, so it's nested as you can see in the example, we're going to see bullet points in the browser display. So if I just add LE with an opening and a closing tag, we'll get our first bullet point. Just copy this one and paste it two times. And now we've got three bullet points and we can add content in between. That looks good. Let's move to step 22. We're going to add a new image right after the unorder list. Once again, images are self-closing, so we don't need a closing tag. We're going to add the source and an alt attribute with a value of a slice of lasagna on a plate. Next step introduces the figure tag. It allows us to add captions to images. So we can nest our image tag into a figure element.
And then the next step, we're going to add the actual caption. And we've got the fig caption tag for that. So after the image, we'll add fig caption, but it's in between the figure tags. It has a closing tag, so don't forget that. And castle of lasagna in between. And now our caption is displayed right under the image. And the figure text indicate that the image and the fig caption they belong together. We can also emphasize certain words and change their style with it. We've got the em tag for that, so right here. Let's emphasize love. If you don't add a closing tag, everything after love is being emphasized. So you have to have this closing tag to indicate when the emphasis should end. We'll move on with another element, h3, top three things cats hate. Don't forget the closing tag. And then the next step, we are introduced to a different kind of list. This time it's an ordered list, which is OL instead of UL for the unordered list. But it basically works the same. So we'll add an opening and a closing tag, in this case OL instead of UL. And we'll add the list items LE in between. And you can see we don't get bullet points now, we'll get numbers. So if we add more of them, we get the numbers one through three. And this is the difference between ordered and unordered lists. So unordered lists are bullet points, ordered lists get these numbers. Let's add the value for the list items. Step 28, we'll add a new figure element after the order list. And something is going in between them. It's a new image. We've got our source attribute with the value given. So let's add that. And here's our new image, right under the ordered list. Let's add an alt attribute, the value is given. We'll add a fig caption, right after the image. Keep in mind, all of that is nested in a figure tag. So it's just like we did before. And our caption text is given right here. And now it's displayed in the browser. Step 32, so we don't just have emphasis tags, we can also use strong to make certain words, letters, sentences have a bold style. And again, if you forget the closing tag, everything after the opening tag is being turned bold. But if we add it right here, only hate is being emboldened.
Here's our first section. Here's the second one. It ends in line 33. And after that, we're supposed to add a third section. We'll start with an H2 heading, cat form, in the section. And now we'll add a form element. So we need a form opening tag and a form closing tag. Let us add an action attribute to the form tag. And this basically tells us where the information inside of this form is going to send to. So it's stuff that's happening in the back end. All right. Now we'll add our first input element. And you can understand it much better if I just put it in there and then you can watch the browser and you can see what it is. So I'll add the tag right here. And now we've got this input field where a user could put something in. It's self-closing, so we only need an opening tag. And then the next step, we're going to define what this input is going to look like with the attribute type. And if we add the value text, we've created a text field as an input in our form. In step 39, we're going to give our input tag a name. As a value, we've got get photo URL. So if the user types something in, it's going to be sent to this URL in the back end. And it's going to be connected to the name get photo URL so that we can easily know what this input is referring to. We can also add a placeholder. We need this attribute for that. And if we add, let's say text, we can see right here in our text field, there's now placeholder. We're supposed to add this one, cat photo URL, so that the user knows what he's supposed to put into this text field. Step 41. We also have an option to add a required attribute. It doesn't have any values. We're just going to put it in there. And that way we know that the user has to put something into it. So it's required to have some input. And the user knows that he has to write something, whatever, into it. Step 42, we can add a button and we've got button text for that on the text in between the opening and closing tag. It's going to define what's being shown within the button in our browser display. 
Let us simply add it and you can see what it does. If I just create it like this, you can already see the button. And if I now add the text submit, the button gets bigger and it says submit. We could click on it and is the default message that the user would see. And if we do it, the input from the input text field would be sent right here and would have the name cat photo URL attached to it. You can see our button is an inline element, so it's going to be shown right next to the text field. And it doesn't matter if you create, let's say, a blank line in your code. It doesn't change anything in the browser display. But you can also add attributes to your button tag right here. Let us add the type attribute, and we'll call it submit so that we clearly know that this is a submit button. It doesn't change anything in the browser display. Step 44. There are more input types. We've used a text field until now, but we can also add radio buttons. Just create a new input, give it the type radio, and you can see it already displayed. Once again, input tags are self-closing. And we'll add a text to it indoor, and we can see our radio button right here and a text right next to it. We also have label elements, and it helps to associate the text for an input element with the input element itself. So it's once again stuff that's happening in the background, so you won't see much of it in the browser display. But it's important to write it like this when you actually send information via your form to the URL that's given in the form action. Let us nest our radio input inside of a label. Nothing changes in browser display, but we can now add an ID. You can basically add IDs to anything in HTML. So it's an attribute again. And IDs can help us in multiple ways, but primarily we'll use them to identify certain labels or headings, or images, or whatever you add it to. In this case, we're going to add it to the input field, and we'll call it indoor. Let's add a second input, type radio button, and we'll also add labels to it and nest it. So just copy paste this one and change the ID and the text itself to outdoor. And here we've got our second radio button. 
And that's an inline element once again. So indoor and outdoor are on the same horizontal line. For now, we can select them both at the same time because our browser doesn't really know that they belong to one another, so that they're part of a group. And we can change that by adding the name attribute. And then we'll give both of these input fields the same name. And then the browser knows that they belong to the same group. So let us do this. Name attribute equals and our quotation marks and indoor, outdoor. And now if we select one, the other one is being deselected automatically. All right, more stuff for the back end in step 49. We're going to add value attributes so that in the back end we know what value is selected. Otherwise, it's just going to deliver the on as a value. But if we add indoor, for example, to our indoor input, it would send indoor as a value to the URL in a form action. Now for the second one, we'll need the outdoor. That way it's easier to understand later on in the back end what's being given as a value or what's being selected by the user. We can add another element to our form, in this case the field set element. And we'll nest the indoor and outdoor radio buttons in it. So just use field set right here, opening tag. And it's going to change the display in the browser. And we'll add the closing tag right here. Let us nest it. So this stuff is now in the field set. And that makes it much more easier for the user to understand what is grouped. We can add a legend to our field set. That's going to be displayed right here. And we also have the text that we should display as a legend. Let us just put it right here. Legend opening tag and a closing tag. And in between comes this text. Is your cat an indoor or outdoor cat? And it changes the browser display like this. Step 52, we're going to repeat a couple of things that we've already learned in the previous steps. So we're basically adding a new form. Let's start with field set opening and closing tag. And we'll add an input field. In step 53, we're going to add a legend. What's your cat's personality? For now, this field set is completely empty, except for a legend. But now we'll add input to it. And we are introduced to our third type, so not radio buttons or text. In this case, it's a checkbox. But the way to write it is still the same. Input, it's self-closing, type equals quotation marks, checkbox. And we'll add the text for the checkbox to the right hand side of it. And we're going to give it this name, loving, obviously not inside of the tag, but outside. Only we can see it in browser display.
it needs to have an ID. And it's the same as our text for it. So ID equals quotation marks loving. Let's add the label. And we are also introduced to a new attribute, which is the for attribute. And it's once again something that's important for stuff that's happening in the back end. So it won't change anything for a browser display. Let's add the label. But this time we're going to nest only the text in it and we're going to use the for attribute right here. Same value as the input, ID, which is loving. So instead of labeling the entire input, we can also label only this text and then use the for attribute. But it's a different way to write these forms. We're going to add another attribute to our input field, in this case name equals personality. And again, that's stuff that's important for when the user actually submits some information. Now let's repeat that for another checkbox input. I'm going to add it right here. You can just copy this one, Ctrl C, then paste it, Ctrl V. What do we have to change? We're going to change it as the text and as the ID. And we also have to change the for attribute in our label to lazy. But the name and the type, they can stay the same. And here's now our second checkbox in our field set. Step 59. Yet another input, copy this one and paste it. What do we have to change? Well, the ID, it's energetic now. The for in our label tag, it's energetic. And the text itself right here. And if we look at the browser, we now have three checkboxes. Loving, lazy, and energetic. Step 60. We are now going to add value attributes to our checkboxes. We've used that before in our radio buttons. And we're going to give them the same value as the ID. So when someone checks these boxes, not on is submitted, but the value that we've given this specific checkbox. We've already used a required attribute and checked is somewhat of the same. So it doesn't have a specific value. You just add it to an input.
So here it is, here's our required one we've used that in an earlier step. We're going to add the check one to the first radio button, which is this one indoor. On if we add it, you can see in the browser that this one indoor is now checked by default. And we're also supposed to give it to the first checkbox, which is loving. And again, the browser reloads and this one's checked by default. Let's add a footer in step 62. And it should be added after the main tag. So here's a closing tag for the main. And here was the opening tag in line four. Footer has opening and closing tags. For well, now we don't have a value, so nothing changes in our browser display. But we're going to add a value right now. We'll nest a P element into it. And we've got a text for it. No copyright, freecodecamp.org. P has a closing tag, don't forget that. And here's our footer now with the text. Step 64, we need an anchor element. We've got the href, so the address to link to. We are in the footer, we are in the paragraph of it, and we're going to edit let me put it right here. Here's our address, and here's the closing tag. Ah, but we are supposed to give it to freecodecamp.org only, so let me select this line right here. I'm gonna press Ctrl X and put it right there. And this is what we needed. Step 65. We've been in the body of our code so far. But we can also add meta information to our website in a head element. So here's the body. It ends in line 58, right after the footer. And it started in line 2. So everything that we can see in a browser display is basically the body. And the meta information, you usually don't want to have that displayed in the browser. But once again, it's important for search engines. Let me add something right here. And we're going to give it a title. A title, you can actually see it if you hover over your tab. So in most browsers, if you hover over it, the title is being displayed. In this case, we're going to call it cat photo app. Step 67, we can see our HTML tag, which is the first code line and the last. It just says that whatever comes after it or in between it is HTML code, and we can add a language to it, so attribute lang, and in this case it's English. So every browser now knows that the content is in English. The first line of every HTML document should be this one, doc type HTML. It's self-closing. Step 69. And here's a little bit of meta information. In this case, it's for the char sets or the character set. And we'll add it inside of the head, meta, then char set as an attribute, and the value is utf minus 8. So this is just a name for the character set that's being used. And this is typically what's being used in almost all websites that you can see. Uh, 
And that's it. This is the walkthrough for the first free code camp HTML course right here, the Cat Photo app. I hope that this walkthrough has helped you when you've got stuck. I will surely go over all of the other ones as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.